blues diva and R&B diva, <laughs> Millie Jackson. She's up next. Let's talk. <laughs> What's up, everybody, and welcome back over here to my channel, Peppy's Point of View. And I'm your R&B historian. I'm your host, Peppy. And let's just dive right into it. We're going to talk about Millie Jackson. I'm trying to uh, finish discussing uh, the R&B divas in the book or the Soul for Divas in the book, uh, The Soul for Divas by David Nathan. And disclaimer, I have no affiliation with David or Millie Jackson. I'm just interested in learning more about some of my favorite R&B divas. And we're discussing Millie Jackson. Woo, child, let me just tell you, okay? <sighs> Millie Jackson, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I'm laughing because I can look back now with laughter, but I definitely was not laughing uh, when Millie Jackson's music entered into my household. <laughs> I'm sorry. This lady here, I'm here to tell you, you know, if you watched my video about Vanity and I just basically said after listening to Vanity's music, I needed to just go in and take a shower. I really did. I just felt so icky, right? Like, I was like, oh, gosh, this is just too much XCX. Like, you know, and listening to Millie Jackson, well, I take that back, hearing Millie Jackson's music as a child in my household, I promise you, I was like, huh? I was like almost embarrassed to hear it. While my mother and my father and my aunts and uh, uncles and uh, their friends and other relatives were at the card table playing cards. And I remember the toilet album, okay? Uh, I think it was called Back to the SHIT. I remember that. And looking at the album cover, I was like, huh? And she was so raunchy, so raw. You know, I was like, I just can't do this. <laughs> just like, I just can't. I look back with laughter, but now Millie Jackson uh, really did become one of my favorite divas. Um, I believe it was 1991 when she released the, the album uh, Young Man, Older Woman. I had that album and I loved it track for track. I really did. Uh, one of my favorite songs, two of my favorite songs, I think, on that album is called When Are You Going to Tell Your Woman About Me in another song called Taking My Life Back. But anyway, what I want to do right now, without further ado, let's talk about uh, Millie Jackson in uh, David Nathan's take on her in his book, The Soul for Divas. You read the chapters on Dion, Aretha. Diana, Patty, and Gladys. If you are white and you love any of those divas, you might be wondering, who is Millie Jackson? Never heard of her. If you are African-American and over 30, chances are you definitely know. If you are under 30, you might have heard her name. And if you are under 18, just go ask your mother or father. Millie Jackson, the undisputed queen of S-E-X and soul, has had 40 hit singles and more than 15 best-selling albums. She has also shocked, scared, and satisfied her loyal hardcore audience for nearly 30 years. Millie has been banned from the air, <laughs> temporarily condemned by Reverend Jesse Jackson, 
offended symphony orchestras and feuded with at least one of her Southern Soul sisters. She is a deeply hilarious, highly comedic, salt of the earth soul sister, both on and off stage. If you want to know who Millie Jackson is for real, read on. Shades of Gloria Gaynor. At first, I was afraid. I was petrified. In November 1974, I was in New York for the very first time, staying with my good friend Gary, who had moved to Brooklyn that summer. John Abbey, then editor of Blues and Soul, had suggested I call Millie Jackson during my visit to possibly do an in-person interview with her. Several months before, on the occasion of the release of Caught Up, her third album and ultimately her first gold LP, I've spoken with the thoroughly magnificent Millie over the telephone. I guess I was feeling a little flush from that first telephone interview since I ended the res resultant article in May 1974 issue of Blues and Soul with the following statement. All I can say is more power to Millie Jackson, a bold, outspoken, sassy, but beautifully bad soul sister. She can come check me out anytime she wants. I would have to consider eating those words on that cold November day. Yes, Millie snapped when she answered the phone. Can I speak to Miss Jackson, please? I asked in my typically proper, reserved English manner. Who is it? She yelled back. After I identified myself, Millie roared, yeah, child, I know John Abbey. You want to do an interview? Well, you got to come to my place in Brooklyn. When I told Millie that I was staying in that borough, too, she told me exactly how via subway to get to her place deep in the heart of what people called the ghetto back in the 1970s. I attempted to follow Millie's instructions on how to get to her place by subway. You get off at Washington and Clinton, she said in her famous raspy voice. I don't know what happened, but I found myself on the wrong side of the platform and was near, nowhere near Clinton or Washington. Excuse me, Miss Jackson, I think I got on the wrong train. I ventured rather timidly. Dang it, all right, you got to get back on the train. 30 minutes later, my for real Afro blowing in the chilly wind, I emerged from the right subway station, literally just outside the apartment building that Millie called home in 1974. Many years later, she would correct me when I said I met her at her place in the projects. I didn't live in no projects, she scolded me. Well, whatever the name of Millie's Brooklyn neighborhood was, I knew I was a stranger in a strange land as I walked toward the building. It was plenty obvious from the stare I got when I asked a passerby if I had the right address that young white men with bushy hair weren't exactly a dime a dozen in that part of the city. Eventually, I found Millie's apartment on the 20-something floor of the building. Took you long enough, she chastised me as I introduced myself again. As I've noted in my first article on her, she was indeed bold, outspoken, and very sassy. So how's that effing John Abbey? Millie explained loudly. You know, that magazine Blues uh, and Soul did the first thing on me in Europe, and I know you guys love real R&B, don't you? I told Millie how much R&B meant to me how much I loved her first record, Child of God, and how pleased I was to meet her in person. Okay, okay, she countered with that almost shy grin. If I didn't know better, I would swear that big bad Millie Jackson was on the verge of blushing. You want to get some pizza? She asked. We got a great pizza uh, just down the street. We got a great pizza place just down the street, Joe's Pizza, and they got the best effing pizza in Brooklyn. We chowed down, and I thanked Millie, headed back to the subway, grinning and satisfied that I met one of the most real down-to-earth women in the world of music. Twenty years later, Millie was on the telephone with me, talking about a projected cable television show and one skit that won't make the final cut. I take me singing the F U Symphony, which has been part of my show for years. When the Denver Symphony Orchestra 
with the Denver Sif Symphony Orchestra. It was so funny because we had all these white women playing the strings and these black guys doing the drum horns. And they saw the music, but didn't know what it was. The women thought it was some classical SHIT, you know, the F Huck U Symphony. Until I started singing F U, F U, F U, you should have seen their faces. Many hadn't changed through those two decades. She was still as earthy, funny, and outrageous as ever, and still a singing fool. As I thought about our first interview and the first time I heard her music, I mused that while she justifiably earned a reputation of the queen of S-E-X and so, people might have missed what a great, what a really great singer she was before she began shocking the world with four-letter words, rapping, cussing, and straight-ahead album titles like Back to the S-H-I-T a 1989 Jive, Jive album. Millie had made it obvious to people who love soul music raw, tough, and honest that she was the real deal. Somewhere along the way, she established herself as the funniest woman in R&B and folks forgot that she could sing her A-double-S off. In 1988, she was busy promoting The Tide is Turning, her second album for Jive. She explained the dilemma in Blues and Soul interviews she did. She said, and she said, and I did. The only problem I have now is that my old fans listen to my new stuff and they say there's no dirt on the LP, but they know they can come see me in person and I'm still going to talk SHIT. And I stopped right there. <laughs> I stopped kind of like where um, I began, and that is how I discovered Millie Jackson. And as I said before, I remember in my household hearing her music, and I was like, you know, this is too adult for me to even be listening to. It's kind of like you hear it while your parents are playing cards and they're talking and all of that stuff, and you try to ignore it, and then... <laughs> At a rabbi sort of way, I would actually look around at the adults, looking at them, trying to see if they're going to say, hey, turn that off. There's a kid here, <laughs> you know, in the, in, uh, um, in the living room with us. Or, or should I just kind of like say, this is, an, uh, this is adult music, and maybe I just need to walk away and go outside and play with the other kids. <laughs> Until, you know, they stopped listening to Millie Jackson. Either way, it was some really good music. Even if it was kind of, you know, raunchy. A lot of S-E-X and all of that. But at the end of the day, I still liked the music. It was just great music. And I would wait patiently to hear her sing. And that's the thing that I want to bring up that David brought up. It was just the fact that I, you know, I appreciate her voice and I definitely love that album, Young Man and Older Woman. And I think that's what I'm going to do. I think now I'm going to end here talking about uh, David Nathan's take on Millie Jackson. Just go out and get the book. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and listen to Millie Jackson's uh, album, Young Man and Older Woman, and do a review on that real quick. I think I feel like I want to do that. Anyway, on that note, <laughs> if you made it this far in my commentary, then please go ahead on. And I think that it's appropriate for me to ask you guys to hit the subscribe button, the like button, the share button, uh, especially leave a comment. Uh, I appreciate you guys out there for all of your support. And over here, my motto is simple. Put your behind where your heart desires to be. And whenever I leave my mother's presence, she always says to me, she says, baby, remember, I love you, but God loves you best. I love you guys out there. Uh, I look forward to seeing your next video. And until then, you guys take care of yourselves. All right. <laughs>